Hi, everybody. I'm Victor Cajal, and I want to take a moment first uh, to congratulate Mike and all of the volunteer staff that have done all this stuff all along the way, served us food, and made sure that we were good. So let's give a big hand to those guys. It's awesome. And, um, you know, I did my part, and I bribed you before I did my presentation, so I have at least six people that are going to clap for me. So that was... <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk to you about Preview today, Preview.app. And many of you are probably thinking, what the heck is wrong with you, Victor? What is Preview? We go in there, we look at our PDFs, we look at pictures, done. Well, one of the things that I find uh, is hidden in many of the applications that Apple provides for us is this incredible ability to give us operability that we forget about. Because we get tempted by other applications to do other things with these applications and we forget that we have this incredible power built into these free applications that Apple has given us. Preview is one of those applications. And I want to focus, as I'm speaking today, I want you to think about a one-stop shop where you can take pictures and not only view PDFs and view pictures, but you can annotate pictures, you can edit pictures, and do it all in one place without having to round trip to other applications that you bought and it's all there for you. So by the end of the presentation, if you're tempted to go home and open up Preview and explore all the things that I can't cover in 20 minutes, then we would have been successful this morning. So think about that as uh, we go along. First of all, let's talk about you know, a powerful image editor that is within Preview.app. It's got a great picture annotation uh, capability. I'm going to demonstrate some of those to you with very short screencasts today. Document annotation for PDFs or other documents. And of course, also being able to add digital signatures. How many times do we have to send out a tax form, send something to a lawyer, uh, and we want to have an easy way to do that. All of that is in there and a lot more. There are many things that I can't cover here today in 20 minutes that uh, the homework assignment is for you to go find them or for you to tell me things that you've done with Preview that I may not know about. So let's talk about image editing. Uh, one of the most popular things that I do in Preview.app is I just adjust the size and the color of a picture. Many times, maybe we're building a, a web app and we need a smaller image and we want to reduce the size of images that we publish out there because it makes our web applications act faster. Or we want to put something uh, on one of the social media sites and we don't need to put our full resolution pictures on that. Nobody's ever going to see the power of that. So we can use just a very simple adjust size feature. If you go to tools, adjust size, you get this preference pane right here, and it'll show you currently how big your document is. Now, two important things I want to point out here. One of them is scale proportionability. If you have that checked, you're going to see this little lock icon right here. Very important, because if that's not locked and you go and you change this size, let's say to a smaller size, because you want to reduce this file size, if you don't have that lock, it's going to give you that squash look of pictures that just doesn't look cool. So make sure that that is on if that's what you desire, but you can absolutely take it off. Resample image, I always just leave that there. So one of the quickest things you can do is simply to go from your 100% and your two, in this case, 2.2 megabyte file, and just change the percentage to 25%. Still plenty big for anything we're going to do on the web, and it brings down that file size to 175 kilobytes. So well, that's a huge savings. And again, if you're doing any kind of even simple web development, you're going to save a lot of load time with that. Ask Julie about that. She'll tell you that uh, they really appreciate that kind of thing. Now, a couple of different ways you can do it. Percentage is one of them. The next way that I do it, and again, the big deal about this, is that you're going to go from this huge image to something very small that's still plenty visible anywhere you look. Now, the next feature is on tools again, and it's adjust color. If you remember iPhoto, this preview app is still using the same engine that iPhoto used to use to adjust your pictures. I love this engine. I actually like it better than the Photos engine just because it's more familiar to me and it's closer you know, to other applications that I use like Lightroom. Okay? So a lot of power here in order for you to adjust your exposure, your contrast, saturation, even has you know, all of the histogram information that you can do. Let me show you a couple of examples how we can take a picture and do this by either doing auto levels, quick and easy, one stop, just like in your phone, boom, finished, you can be done with it, you've made your image smaller, you're ready to save it and send it wherever you want it. But the real power comes when we start using these other tools to adjust exposure, contrast, highlights, saturation, 
The temperature is a good one. A lot of people are not familiar that when you take a picture, there's something called white balance. And by using white balance, you can give a picture different hues. If you take pictures early in the morning, pictures tend to have a bluer hue because they're cooler. And then later in the afternoon, you can have a more golden color. Well, you can do that all very simply by uh, using this tint right here. And if you go towards the right, it's gonna give you more of a feel like that picture was taken in the middle of the day when there is more sun. Or you can make a picture that you took in the middle of the day and turn that the other way and make it a little bit cooler looking. And something like that can make a great impact on the story you're trying to tell when you uh, expose a picture and put it out there because you should always be trying to tell a story when you're taking a picture. Now you're gonna see something here that many of you may be familiar with, and this is a little eyedropper. Now, whenever you take a picture, if you wanna capture what the natural white balance point was of that picture, you can simply just take this little eyedropper and drop it into a pixel or five in your uh, picture that looks neutral gray. It doesn't have to be perfectly gray. It can be light gray, a little darker gray, not black, not white. And by dropping that dropper there, you're gonna see your picture instantly get the white balance that was there when you took the picture. Very cool little hint that you can use, of course, also in photos. So you can also do things like sepia tone if you want to get that oldie look, or just increasing the sharpness a little bit can give your pictures just a little bit more crispness. All of this stuff is like salt. Be careful. A little bit goes a long way and experiment. You know, now you can, you know, you can undo it, but be careful because we sometimes we go, ooh, saturation, and then your pictures just look crazy. You know, you don't want that to happen. So again, let me show you a couple of examples of how we do this. This is a picture uh, that I took at Glacier National, and it's got a couple of problems. The clouds here are a little blown out, a little too bright. The details really aren't there. And the trees here are a little dark. They're not showing the shadows aren't coming out. So let me show you a little screencast of how we can go about here, play with the exposure, get that how we want it to look, and very simply, we can just do that to a picture. Now again, you can say, eh, I can do this in photos, I can do this in Lightroom. One stop shop, folks. It, the magic comes when you use this tool, not only for this, but as an annotator and everything else. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you deals with saturation. We talked about, hey, you wanna make your color black and white? Quick and simple, slide it all the way to the left. It's not beautiful like a Nick Software black and white plugin would be, but it's gonna get the job done. The other way I went was, you know, saturating a lot. When I find a point that I like, I'm happy with it. Again, my picture is ready to go. Next thing I can show you is having to do with adjusting the highlights. Remember I told you these clouds are a little blown out? Look what happens when I take that and put it to the right. All of a sudden the detail is there, and on these trees, probably hard to see in this green, they were a little dark. The shadows have come out a little more, and I can see a little bit more detail. Quick and easy, and uh, very easy to do within this application. So we move on from simple picture editing that we can do in a lot of different places, we move on to other preview tricks. Things like adding annotations to pictures, to PDFs, to anything that you bring into preview. And I'm telling you, there's just a bag of tricks. I can't show you all of them. There are shapes, there are arrows, there are uh, lines. You can make them thicker, you can make the shapes different sizes. It's all there, but we just don't tend to play with it. So I really encourage you to go back and play because I can't show you all of them. The second one I am going to show you, though, is working with something called the alpha channel. Have you ever had a picture where you wanted to take the background out of the picture because maybe you want to sell something and you took a picture of it in the kitchen and the background doesn't look great? I want to show you how you can use preview to remove the background from part of a picture and it's all built right in. Redacting, picture, uh, redacting documents is great, you know, putting those little black boxes so people can't see your stuff. And so you can do that very easily with this tool. I'm gonna to show you how to do that. But very important, whenever we redact a picture in PDF and preview, we need to make sure that we flatten the file. Because if you simply redact a picture and put boxes or any annotation to a file, and then you send that off to somebody and they have preview and open it, they can just take your boxes away and see everything you darkened up. So I'm gonna show you how you can get rid of that so when they do it, they can't do that. Then also I'm gonna show you how to add digital signatures to documents. They've got a real slick way of doing that. And finally, a little trick on how to add emoji uh, to PDFs or any other document here. Many of you may do a lot of these things, and that's great. If you do, uh, that's awesome, but many of you may have forgotten 
that preview.app can do this. So let's get going to, to some of these right now. Adding uh, titles to a picture. Oftentimes we take a picture, we want to put it out on the internet, and we just want a simple title, or we want to put a watermark on it because we want people to know we took the picture and we don't want to have to buy a fancy watermark tool. Well, why not use preview to do that? So here I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to show you how I took a picture that I took just this month and I wanted to post that up on the internet, but I wanted to have a title. So I'm going to go to my toolbox, pick a font size. Next, I'm going to go to the text tool and I'm simply going to start typing the title. All your regular fonts are available here that would be available to your Mac. And you can change all the sizes within here and within here. Here I put a title on there. I simply move the title down. Picture looks fine. It's ready to go. I save it. Now I can share it wherever I want it. Again, if I wanted that to be a watermark, I could put my name there and I could fade out just by highlighting this text. I could then do a fade on it and make it look like a watermark. Quick and easy and, and, it's, and it's done. So a, really a neat thing to do with pictures sometimes. I could have done a bunch of other things. Imagine if you had a screenshot and you wanted to point to somebody certain parts of it. I could go over here to these tools, shapes or arrows or lines, and put arrows and annotate the heck out of this thing and then be able to publish it really easy without having to round trip or go to other applications. Makes it really nice uh, to be able to do that in, in a pretty simple way. All right, let's go next to a picture that I had of a camera that I wanted to sell on Craigslist, but I want that to kind of stand out. We all go on Craigslist and everybody's got their picture, but I wanted mine to pop a little bit. So I brought it into preview and I'm gonna show you how, how I went about doing that by using text and by using shapes right within preview. Again, one-stop shop. I didn't have to go out of the application. I adjusted the picture here and I'm gonna show you how I annotate the picture here. We'll go to our toolbox. In this particular case, I'm going to go over to the shape tool and I'm going to grab a thought bubble. It's got the wrong color on it, so I'm going to reshape that thought bubble any size that I want. I'm going to go over to my color picker and I'm going to change the color of the thought bubble, go over to my text tool, and then simply type the text that I want to put across to the buyers of my product. Buy me today! I'm going to move that text over into the thought bubble. I'm going to give the text a little different color by going to the color picker and putting a different highlight on it. And now I've got a picture that says a little bit more to that buyer than just, yeah, here's another picture of another camera some dude is selling. So very effective way to tell a story in pictures in just a, you know, 30 seconds. It doesn't take very long at all to do something like that. Any questions before I go on at this point? Yeah. Uh, edit is non-destructive uh, until you flatten it. Once you flatten the file, then you're done. Yeah, you can go back in here and, and take out anything you want. Yes? What if you just made a copy, I mean, you make a copy of the picture, then you have the original? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that as well. All right, let me go on and show you a couple other tricks. This is my dog, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> She's awesome. And she said, you know, I want to be in Chicago too, so I, I brought her. So in this picture, I want to put Buffy in a different background. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but I am going to show you how to remove this red and yellow background by using the alpha channel tool that's built in right preview. Now, I picked this red color with multiple colors on purpose because it's a little difficult to do and it takes a little practice. If I had a solid color like black or, or blue or something, it would be a lot easier to take care of because the alpha channel is going in and saying, okay, I want to get rid of all the pictures that match the color that you're pointing your mouse to at this particular second. So this video is going to, you're going to see me make some mistakes because you're going to make some mistakes, but that's part of the fun here to get the alpha channel to work how you want it to. So let's go for it, I think. Okay, I'm going to go to my toolbox here. And I'm going to pick this wonderful little wizard box right here. And notice how I'm going to start dragging and dra what, what my mouse. And sometimes I pick too big of a region, so I go back. It's going to convert it to a PNG file. And then I'm just going to slowly keep dragging. If I make a mistake, I'm going to do a Command Z and slowly keep dragging it, get rid of all the red first. And then I'm going to get rid of some of this yellow red color. It didn't get rid of it all at once because it wasn't purely that color. Again, the picker is saying only this color. So slowly, slowly, we are able to get rid of this. 
And if I then take this file and export it as a JPEG, I can bring it into a more powerful tool like Lightroom and do you know, another channel and put you know, Buffy behind the Bahamas where she really wants to be or something. <laughs> so real easy to do. It takes me just a couple of minutes. But you can do it pretty cleanly. And pictures like this of dogs or hair are particularly hard to do because you've got a lot of things here. But if you're just real careful, you can get there. Again, okay, there are other tools that do this better, of course. But they don't do it in a one-stop shop like Preview can do. So there you go. Buffy's taken care of. She's ready to be exported. Or I could annotate this document or do whatever I want with it. And uh, I've separated her out in a matter of a minute and a half. And the work is done. A lot of people forgot that Alpha Channel was there. You probably knew at one time, but you may have forgotten. It's a very cool feature. All right, redacting PDFs. Yes, there are a bunch of great tools that can do that. Don mentioned one earlier this morning. You know, PDF Pen, PDF Pen Pro, all those tools are great for that. But sometimes we just want to be quick and dirty. In this case, I sold something on Craigslist, and, this, and uh, the guy who I sold this to said, hey, I want a copy of the receipt for uh, warranty purposes. Well, I don't particularly know this guy, so I don't want to give him my order number or what I, you know, I, he can have what I paid for, but maybe my entire street address. I don't care if you guys have that. This is an $11 item. I'm, I'm OK with that. So let me show you how quickly we can go into preview and take care of this. Go to our toolbox. I'm going to make sure that both of my color boxes are black, because I'm going to be making some black rectangles by going over to my shape box. Quick and easy, make the rectangles the color that I want. Go ahead and redact what I need redacted. Once I do it once, I can click Command-C to copy that item over, and then Command-V to put it someplace else. By doing that, now I have the ability to react, redact anything I want in this entire document once I've done it. Now, the important part, folks, is that if I just ship that out the way it is to that guy who I sold it to and he has a Mac, he can just take those boxes away and get my credit card number. So I'm going to go to File, Print, and then I'm going to make a mistake and finally go down to the PDF and save as PDF. Once I save it as PDF again, it's going to flatten that file. In this case, I'm going to put it on my desktop. And then by flattening it, the boxes will not be able to be removed. You will have taken care of that problem. Yes, go ahead. If you flatten the file, does it make it smaller size? It doesn't make it smaller size if you don't want to. There is a, another feature within a preview that you can go, when you save as PDF, you can use what's called the course engine. And it does have something that makes any PDF much smaller. So it's an advanced feature, but it is there. But normally, you know, about the same size. Adam, go ahead. Just one quick thing on, on redacting. The people who may have an app where the PDF originally does an OCR, and OCR is the text, just drawing boxes over it may not remove the underlying search OCR data. That's correct. Right. Because, because some of that data goes as metadata yeah, along with the file. Data in the file, so you may need to go in and You know, I don't know the answer to that, but that's a really good point. And what Adam said is if you have some of these other tools and you do OCR to change it into text and you do this, even flattening it, some of that data may have gone into the metadata of the file and so they can still get it. So that's a really good point. And I'm not sure about the ability of Preview to do that, to be honest. All right, great point. So I've redacted my file and put it on the desktop and, and I can't move those boxes now. Now I can go ahead and send that file off and it's safe and it's secure and it's an easy way to do that. Cool. Let's go on to adding a signature to a PDF. Here I got you guys' diploma. You guys are preview rock stars after this. And I wanted to make sure that Tom Maxstock signed this with his real name. And so let's use preview to do that. And Apple has made an easy way for us to do just that. We're going to go into our magic toolbox here. And we're going to do a very cool tool called the signature peeker. You will see that there's already one there. I get rid of it. And you have two ways that you can do a signature. Trackpad and simply sign with your finger. Or the cool way, you take a camera, put a piece of paper with a signature on it. It's going to digitize that signature, flip it around. And now I can drag that signature anywhere I want in the document, resize it, move it down, make it red. It doesn't matter. It's just an object as far as preview is concerned. Now I've got a great looking a document there. I can flatten it if I want, and I could send each one of you guys a certificate for your, doing your homework. Very cool trick. Again, camera or just your finger. Go ahead. 
can you save more than one signature at a time? Yes, you can save more than one signature at a time as far as I know. As a matter of fact, when you first saw that video, there were two signatures here that were the same. A am I going to swear by that? No. <laughs> and somebody's saying, yes, you can. Melissa. Um, to the point, the question about multiple signatures, when I teach my clients how to use this, I always have them do a signature and then a signature and a Awesome. Did everybody hear Melissa? Yeah. Signature and initial. That's a great hint. So basically, you have two signatures saved. So if they just need to do a quick initial, they can drag it. Or if they want to do a signature, they can drag it, and it's all done. And once it's in there, just like you saw when I first brought it up, it's going to save that information for you so you don't have to do it every single time. But very cool. You could have put anything in that picture, by the way. Go ahead. One step back for a basic. How do you do the flat file? Is it just a double save as a PDF? Flat file, uh, file, print, save as PDF. And that becomes flat. Yeah. And, and, you know, after you're done, open up that flat file and just go to your black box and see if you can move it over. If you can't, you're good to go. Awesome. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Like, I'm a big nerd when it comes to microphones. I love microphones. So the reason I'm showing this microphone is because I'm a big nerd about microphones and I want you to see it. That's the only reason I'm showing it. <laughs> But I'm going to do something with it just to show you how we can use the Mojai and incorporate them into our Macs no matter where we're at. Now, control, command, space bar. Remember that. If there's anything else you remember out of my application, remember it. That command can be used anywhere in our Macs to bring up the Mojai. And you can print emoji from any text just like if it was text. And it works everywhere. I just happen to be using it here to augment my beautiful microphone. So let me show you how I do that. I go into preview, and then I'm simply going to do control plus command plus space bar, and boom, there's all my emoji. And I can just simply drag them. When I go to my text tool, I just drag the emoji, and depending, I don't know if you say emoji or emoji, I'm from Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> so I put two in here. Now notice they're pretty big. The reason they're big is because I went over to the font size and just made them bigger. If you want smaller ones, make them smaller. I mean, you know, you ever wanted to send somebody a document with a turd? <laughs> You're there, man. You can do it. So again, then I'm going to write a message. I'm a nerd, and my document is ready to go. So. You know, we've talked about pictures. We've talked about annotations, redactions, a bunch of other things that I couldn't show you this morning. It can do it all. You know, go home and explore with it. The Mac has a bunch of applications like this that can do these magics. And maybe we've just forgotten because we get so cool that we go buy the newest thing. You know, go over to screencastonline.com. Don has covered all this stuff. You know, he really has. And you can go get details on that. I want to give you one more hint and a shout out to my friend, Davis Sparks and Brett Terpsta. I don't know if Brett's still here or not. But they made a really cool uh, book called 60 Tips, found over at 60tips.com. And they have like 55, 60 screencasts that show you these kinds of little tricks that we may have forgotten about. So I wanted to give a shout out to those guys. That's it. That's my questions. I can be found at Victor Cahiel. You can write to me at typicalmacuser at gmail.com. Anything else? Because I think I went one minute over. You guys rock. Thank you so much. Thanks.